I don't think there's more of a helpless feeling when you're watching your child go down a road you can't stop. I actually don't even know why I was on that corner that day. I just remember sitting down and I shot up and was out. Like, I know that. Because I usually don't fall asleep or fall out with needles in my hand. My heart stopped. Just even that picture of him on the ground and Officer Donahue down on the ground with him. Really, as hard as it was to look at that picture, my heart was full that this officer, you know, they weren't looking down on him because people do. Two thousand seven, um, he came in and he sat down and he just said, "I'm in trouble." And I started charting it out, how many pills he was getting, and I was horrified. I ended up over sixteen hundred tablets of oxycodone, oxycontin, Norco, tramadol. We had no idea what was going on with him couldn't reach him. We didn't know who he was anymore. Oh, just a minute, it's Jeff. Hi, hi, how are you doing today? I OD'd 12 times in like a year and a half. The first time I OD'd, or my first thought was, I would have never been able to tell my mom I love her, said nothing ever again. But like that was my first thought, and it took five shots of Narcan to bring me back. The next thing I did was get up and look for more drugs. People don't use these drugs the majority of the time to get high. They'll pay anything or do anything to keep out of the pain. They stay on the drug and become homeless. And they only have a short amount of time to be able to have that person understand. They have an appointment with death. He was, he was a happy little guy, and he loved sports. He loved going to school. When he got into high school, he didn't do bad. He was a, like a normal kid, but wanting to fit in. The stress is off the charts because you, you have no control at all. And missing him, just vacations that we never took. Movies we never saw together. Holidays we didn't spend together. It's called felony false impersonation. And they also added an identity theft um, charge as well. OK, OK, got to go. When people okay. will relapse. And the criminal justice system often does not provide for relapses. Not having a system that tolerates that just makes the problem worse because it also destroys their morale and psyche and then it, it just feeds the self-destructive behavior. When I was getting out of these other places, I'm going back to the city to do drugs. There's so many people in there that I know from the city. You know, we talk, where are you going after this? I'm, you know where I'm going. <laughs> I'm glad that I have my mom on board, so it's like I'm still working towards that end. But if you don't do that, where's the hope? Before you're outside, yeah. So, healthcare evaluation, there's no therapy here. Step seven, which is the last step. My heart is, is happy, but he's still locked up. The fear, even in two years or five years or three months or whenever he gets out, hoping that we don't go back through that same door again. You don't learn any of this stuff in life. It's not anything we had to deal with in our family growing up. It's hard. Because we never thought there was hope. Um, 
after years of worrying more about burying him than him having a life. My hope, though, is that we can work together to get the word out, find other people who have walked our path, who want to do something about this, and him to be independent and happy. That's what we all want for our kids. But he's had 16 years of this addiction. I, I don't know what the future holds, but that's my hope for him.